Today on the Star Trek Universe podcast, we're doing, if we were Q, what would our perfect crew slash situation be? It's kind of, it's become more convoluted than we meant it to be. All that right for this. <laughs> Welcome to the Star Trek Universe Podcast. My name is Matthew Carroll. I'm David C. Robertson. <laughs> so, last week on the cast, we came up with the idea to come up with our dream crew, like a fantasy draft for our crew, right? Well, our, our listener, J- uh, Jason Smith, came up with that's it. Right, that's really? right. That's uh, right. Thank you, Jason Smith. So, we, we decided to do that, and then we started coming up with, like, what were the positions we would need to fill? We came up with, you know, captain, first officer, engineer, communications... Ensign, <laughs> science officer, all this makes sense, medical, security, uh-huh. okay, helmsman, right. admiral, okay, this is where I started feeling like we were drifting from the mission here a little bit, admiral, you know, it's kind of a bigger, not really on the crew, but I'm like, okay, and then we said confidant, which, you know, I like that, I like that, so it's, it's often sure. a, a role, uh, and then we... <laughs> Caterer, which you know, that's fine. There's been a lot of uh, sort of that that role. Uh, th- this is where I think we went off the rails for for my own, and I'm not talking about yours. For my own, we said we were going to do also villain. Like, who is our charismatic villain? Because mm-hmm. once I thought of a villain and sort of what they were doing, my crew became a slave to what I needed for the rest of the plot. <laughs> <laughs> and so now I've pretty much come up with like just a bad fan fiction is I feel like all I really did. Uh-huh. It is mostly probably what I would have chosen anyway, I think. Uh huh. But for like this whole, this whole ordeal, what are we going for the best crew, the most efficient crew, or are we going for the most entertaining crew? So we decided last night that we're, we're coming up with the crew that if we were Q, we are designing the situation and throwing them all together. Right. And importantly, and just because I'm kind of just, – I'm just sort of proud of, of the way I came up with this a little bit. Yeah. Uh, particularly the instant is – Wayward, wayward, regular or recurring ensign, right? And the there's the blustery admiral slash commodore who takes over slash forces captain's hand, right? I liked those speci- those specific titles. Okay. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh I I I I I have that uh, pretty much. So. <laughs> Would you like to go first? Or would you like me to go first? You might have stuck oh. to the mission, the mission statement more. Maybe you should go first. Okay, I guess I'll go first then. So your cue, you're designing your 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 situation: a villain, a charismatic villain, an admiral. All these Star Trek elements that come together to create the situation. Your cue. Mm-hmm. What do you do? Who do you bring from any time and space? All right, so. My captain is Ben Sisko. Ooh. He's my favorite captain. Benji. Um, and the first officer is going to be Spock. And the uh, CMO is going to be McCoy. All right. Medical officer. You don't want to give give a little bit more about like why you chose these people as you're naming them? Um, well, I'm sort of going that way because this way... Spock and McCoy. You went with the, tri- the, the, right. the, the triumvirate, but with... Cisco in the middle. I like that. It yeah. crossed my mind to go that way. Yeah, and what I wanted, to, what I would want to do is that it's just because I'm going as the blustery admiral. Mm-hmm. It's got to be Kirk. Ah, so you're going with a Star Trek the motion picture where Kirk steps in and uh, becomes the captain again. Actually, or is that, is that, or is that maybe two? I forget where he's an admiral. Uh, he's an admiral in, in number two, and I th- he was. I don't, you know, I don't. I think he actually is an admiral in motion picture. Uh, yeah, motion yeah, picture. That Decker was the captain, right? Or he's supposed mm-hmm. to be, and he steps in. Yeah. So, so mm-hmm. in, the, in your situation, it's almost like Ben Cisco is the Decker. A little bit, but I wouldn't actually. 
take the command away from Cisco necessarily, All not right. like fully. Sure, um, sure. I think I would make the 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 arc be Kirk was the captain, and Cisco's more of an untried captain. All right, and he's still trying to like gain the trust of the crew, but for whatever this extended mission is. But uh, you know, Kirk is still just stand there, like muddying it up for him. <laughs> okay, Kirk, Kirk, but, Kirk uh, is like the <laughs> so this goes like the stepdad of the crew, and he's a like little bit. the original dad is still around, um, making you hate the stepdad all the more. Yeah, but my favorite Kirk is that Kirk from Wrath of Khan, who is incredibly flawed and sad that like. Uh, that certain time in his life is over, right? And also sad for all the things that could not uh, that 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 was not because of Starfleet. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And my favorite Kirk is is that exact thing, except when he locks in to his old self after being sad all movie, and then suddenly he's like outfoxing Khan. I just I, I love it. I love it so much. Like he just did, <laughs> yeah. Um, and per- yeah, I, don't, I love it, love it. Okay, so yeah. so who else you got on your crew? All right, uh, so my chief of security is a little bit of a cheat. Okay, but it it was just be how I, I did the how I would want to do the 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 plot. Um, Michael Eddington from Deep Space Nine. Michael Eddington. Okay. Yeah, but if you'll recall, Eddington defected. He was a he was a, he betrayed the Federation for the Maquis. Okay. So he would do something similar. He would somehow betray us in some way, and we'd just wind up with Worf. Okay. So he's like... An- <laughs> <laughs> well, then why put Michael Eddington in there at all if you just want Worf? <laughs> because I really liked Michael Eddington in his storyline. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, where is Worf at all this? Where, why is he on the ship at all? I don't know. Why was he on the ship in TNG before he was the chief of security? All right. There you go. Back when so Yar like was. like a lower-level security officer... Who gets promoted when Michael Eddington, uh, who I don't remember, <laughs> right? Explain and who the Michael Eddington. So he's a mock. He was on DS Nine. Yeah, he was a. He was just chief of security, a Starfleet chief of security on DS Nine. Um, and he just wound up defecting to the Maquis, and it just it was kind of a big twist, kind well, of. Okay, I like it. Uh, well, well um, I, I, I'm just trying to try to at least get you to explain the things at least that I don't get. Because we sure. did get some feedback that some of our references are a little too deep, which I'm at once, uh, ups, you know, you, uh, like that concerns me, and I'm sort of proud of. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just. Using- I like the idea of of Worf being sort of like the the idea of like uh, a, a Klingon Starfleet officer being a new thing. And Admiral Kirk not trusting him. Oh yeah, that's a great that's a great interaction. Kirk, yeah, Kirk it's... with a with a <laughs> the, the person who's supposed to protect the crew being a Klingon. Mm-hmm. That's pretty great. And and maybe McCoy has a little bit of trouble understanding his uh, his biological makeup as he would as he did in Star Trek Six. Mm. So uh, maybe he has a uh, you know another doctor on the ship who. Might be named Bashir or something. Who's not a part of the bridge crew? Mm. Who might yeah. be able to help him with his secret genetic engineering? So <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so where are you putting Bashir? You're saying you're putting Bashir somewhere? Uh, he's not officially anywhere. I'm just <laughs> saying. Say he might be around. You can't say here's my I, crew, I, but I, I'm no, solving we, it by putting. <laughs> no, 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 no. He said dream bridge crew. I'm just saying there might be some lower ranking officers. Like, there might be a Chief O'Brien sure, somewhere down be. in engineering hanging out. There might be. I don't know. But we gave the number of positions to try to keep us to those positions. <laughs> That's why I said might. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> You're just trying to cheat every extra person here that you can. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. <laughs> My chief engineer is Scotty. I just, I can't go outside of Scotty. I love Scotty. I was tempted by LaForge. Uh, I was really tempted by Trip Tucker. Um... I just love Scotty too much. Yeah. Scotty's great. 
Uh, my communications officer is Hoshi Sato because I thought she was a pretty well-rounded character and she was a lot of fun. Yeah, I almost went Hoshi too. I like Hoshi. Um, chief science officer is not Spock, though. My chief science officer mm. is Jedzia Dax. Ooh, good choice. And I chose her. Well, I love Jedzia. I love her character. Um, I love how she has all this memory of all these different lives and everything. I love that she is... Uh, so she she's friends with Klingons. She's just an awesome character, and I really like if I really wanted her in a situation with Worf because I love Worf anyway, um, and I liked their marriage and everything. But I also liked the idea because if you go back to the uh, the Trials and Tribulations episode, she was super attracted to Spock. Mm. Oh, that's right. And I really like the idea that like Spock kind of like gave over the like just said yeah she should be the chief science officer but is still a little bit of a mentor and she's still kind of into him like I like that dynamic and I like how like I, I like the idea that Spock might actually be like into her on a on a scientific level but just think the the rest of her is so wholly illogical. <laughs> <laughs> that he kind of detests her a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just like that. Yeah, that's great. I, I like the, the love triangle between uh, <laughs> Spock Spock and Worf. That's fun. Mm-hmm. And Jadzia. Now, for Wayward Ensign, I, I have... I wrote Tom Paris, and then I wrote an X in it uh, on that, and said, no, Nick Lacarno. Who is Nick Lacarno? <laughs> Nick Lacarno was the guy that uh, Robert Duncan McNeil played, who was supposed to be Tom Paris. Oh, that's right. Remember? Yeah. So, so in the next generation, know, Nick Lacarno was on TNG, correct? Yes. Nick, Nick Lacarno, Lacarno was played by the he, same actor. Mm-hmm. Was supposed to be the character of Tom Paris, but then they changed him for some reason. I believe it was because they did not want to pay the guy who created Nick Lacarna. Yeah. Stupid. <laughs> pay people that create shit. <laughs> just, <laughs> just pay people that create shit. That's all you got to do. <laughs> but I, I like the idea. I like I like Tom Paris. I, I like you know his his the, his obsession with old stuff. And uh, yeah, I, like I thought Tom he was Paris, generally too. a pretty fun character. And uh, could really, I don't. Uh, you'll see later why. What one of the reasons I picked him? All right. Um, confidant Guinan, just because I enjoyed Guinan. Yeah. And um, and I always and I would have get get more into like what she really is or whatever that Q was talking about her being an imp. Hmm. But the caterer would be Chef. And I really like the idea of Guinan like being a little tired of hearing people rattle and would tell them, you know, Chef is a really good listener. <laughs> and just keep sending them to Chef. <laughs> um, annoying child, I'd pick Jake, but he would be off ship being a writer or something. So just, I would not have him on the ship. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, and Helmsman would be Data. This is another one I think would like would, it would be great because it would like double down on driving McCoy insane with Data and Spock. <laughs> and I really want Data and Spock to have their like I really loved when Data and Spock hung out on uh, Unification because they just had like a little bit of a line, a little bit of a conversation where Data was like. Oh, it's interesting. I aspire to be human. And Spock is like, but you're totally logical. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you do that? Um, I, I like that. And I would like to see those characters grow together and like sort of inform the other. Yeah, for sure. I like that a Plus, lot. Plus, I, I, I really love the idea of like Data hanging out. Instead of like hanging out with Jordy LaForge all the time, I really like the idea of Data hanging out with Tom Paris all the time. Hmm. And like it's sort of like uh, when Data's hanging out with that kid in Insurrection, I think, <laughs> and like learning to be a child. I feel like Tom Paris is or Nick Lacarno would be the perfect character to teach Data how to be a child. Yeah, totally. <laughs> He's a man child for sure. <laughs> yeah, 
And my, my favorite, or my chosen uh, charismatic recurring antagonist would be Wayun. Just because I think you could always just keep, you could just keep killing him off and he could keep coming back. And I love Jeffrey Combs more than many things. So many things. Yeah. Ah, uh, Wayun, good choice, good choice. Um, mine, uh, uh, yeah, mine might be a cheat, but it might involve Wayun as well. Um, I like it, man. I like it. You got a good little crew there. Yeah, I thought so. I'm proud of them. I wouldn't call them the finest crew in the fleet or anything, but... Right. So it's it's fun. It's the interactions you want mm-hmm. in your trek. If you were if you were Q and you were throwing these pokes together, it would definitely uh, create some interesting stories. I, I, it's I would so many characters in Star Trek. I would love to see interact. And you did a good job of putting together like 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 Spock and Data interacting uh-huh. more would be awesome. Cool. Well, you want to hear mine? No, I'm good. All right. I'm out. Well, thank you guys for joining us on the Star Trek Universe podcast. <laughs> um, no, I'm fine with that. I'm really fine with that. Uh, I, I, no, I, I really do feel it. like, no. Uh, here, Okay, here we go. Um, open scene. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. Ship destroyed around him. The wires hanging, blood on half his face, half uh-huh. scorched. You hear the words, no, you can't get away. Uh From hell's heart, I stab at thee. For hate's sake, I spit my last breath at thee. Uh And then as the Enterprise rockets away and the ship explodes around Khan, he suddenly finds himself in a distant galaxy among races he's never seen before. He's at a key moment. Everything's frozen around him, and Q approaches him and tells him, you've always been searching for a way for your genetically engineered supremacy to be shown. Well, this is a key moment in time where you can step in and show that supremacy. He's at a Ketracel White refinery. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. Surrounded... He's at, he's at the beginnings of some sort of Jim Hadar uprising where they're fighting back the, uh, the Vorta. And the Jim Hadar, the genetically engineered race from DS9 and the Dominion, uh-huh. they step it. Basically, he, he shows up. Q puts him in a perfect moment where he uses his uh, charisma and intellect to take uh, charge of the Jim Hadar fleet. Uh huh. And not only Jim Hadar, but the Vorda are also genetically engineered for their purpose. And uh, you basically get an entire quadrant of these genetically engineered for their purposes uh, people who are overthrowing the changelings mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and, and vying for their freedom somewhere else, just on the edge of Cardassian space. <laughs> <laughs> the USS Titan flies... <laughs> Oh, God. Suddenly, the last thing he remembers, he was on Viridian 3, making Uh his final sacrifice. (laughs) Uh. But now, he suddenly finds himself on the USS Titan. (laughs) Captain Riker is confused by the presence of Kirk. (laughs) 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 But he quickly, he quickly, some would say too quickly, is willing to submit to a greater man. <laughs> and Riker immediately becomes first officer. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> He's totally willing to do that. <laughs> um, so, Kirk is captain pretty quickly after he shows up against the wishes of an Admiral Janeway. <laughs> Oh. Not only is it against her wishes that he become captain, but pretty much everything he does is against her wishes. <laughs> and then you got a lot of the crew that came with Riker from the Enterprise. You got LaForge in engineering. Uh, a different position for him, but I put Data as communications officer. Huh. I just, I like the idea of my crew members I chose, they all have multiple functions. Mm-hmm. Engineering, I, I should say, I put LaForge partially 
because of the time period he's from, I was really torn between LaForge and Bellana. Because I feel like I feel like I needed to pick newer uh, engineers who are more up on the times. Mm-hmm. I know that may be kind of stupid, but you know, like LaForge is uh, on the flagship ship in the most current Star Trek we have. I feel like he's the most knowledgeable engineer. Plus, I liked him having the chance to be working with communications officer Data, who I realize is not normally the communications officer, but he's he's an android. He can speak all the languages. He can understand yeah. even like digital languages. He can he can understand uh, communications with the Borg, uh, all kinds of things that like you know a normal communications officer can't do. Plus, he's just like having an extra science officer. Bit of a cheat. <laughs> oh yeah, Data can do anything. Yeah, totally. Um, then, since on the edge of Cardassian space, when they get embroiled in this battle, with the Jim Hadar has is starting to invade um, the Alpha Quadrant. Uh, they they happen to have the Cardassian ambassador on their ship of Garrick, the close mm-hmm. confidant. <laughs> <laughs> to our to our captain <laughs> and to the crew. Uh-huh. So I just I, lo- I just love Garrick so much. <laughs> I do too. Um I I put Ensign Nog. Uh it's oh. out it's out near his home. Uh he he he's he's probably just joining the crew and he's just getting his first experiences out on on this new vessel. Um Ensign Nog, he also provides us I think at this point in his life he will have become more uh comfortable with his Ferengi heritage. I feel like he was kind of uh, throwing off his Ferengi heritage in the beginning. When he first mm-hmm. joined Starfleet, he was like, I oh, know I'm Starfleet now. But like, he, maybe he like tries to incorporate his knowledge of the rules of acquisition into his like... It's kind of like Burnham, where she's like become married her emotions and her logic. Mm-hmm. I feel like when he was uh, first uh, becoming a Federation officer, he had a lot of like sort of shame about his uh, Ferengi heritage, and I think mm-hmm. now it'd be interesting to see a Ferengi with that different point of view, like fully integrating his Federation ideals with his Ferengi ideals, like or like at least taking lessons from it, you know? Yeah. So my annoying child position, uh, I, this probably doesn't exactly work with canon because I don't know how they exactly what age they have to be for this to happen. But we'll say it was an emergency <laughs> situation or something. Uh-huh. Uh, Esri Dax has been in an accident. Oh. And Esri Dax has, has, has Dax, the Dax symbiote has to be retransplanted. Oh, and it's okay. transplanted into like an 11 year old child. <laughs> so we get the annoying child actor concept, mm-hmm. but with the memories and the history of Dax. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then uh, science officer. You know, there's almost no re- other reason except for yeah, I just could not do it. Spock. Spock has to be my science officer. Well, absolutely. Um. Then. Uh, I mean, my wasn't. I don't know why I said absolutely. <laughs> right. Uh, and and tied into the entire plot, uh, Odo returns from his travels. Because of the war going on, he returns from visiting the Founders and uh, takes up position as security officer. Okay. So Odo uh, is not only fighting to save the Federation, but he's he's doing what he's always done, which is really fighting to save his people. Yeah. Um, because there, there's this huge war against the Founders going on. I dig and, it. And then Bashir is medical officer, and Bashir... Uh, has a complicated relationship with Well because not only is he a great medical officer, all that, but he is also genetically engineered himself. So there's like a mistrust among the Federation about allowing him to work on this at all. Mm. Like there's more of a crackdown on those characters. Remember that he had that whole group of uh, genetically engineered characters for a while? Like yeah. there's a crackdown on those, and Bashir has to deal with all of that. Sure. Uh, helmsman, I chose Tom Paris just because I can't think of another helmsman that's as much fun as Tom Paris. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that's my crew, except for catering. Catering provided to you by Cisco's Cajun Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, we get Cisco in the kitchen, uh, who can also, of course, be a confidant and be around helping out wherever he can. So is this going to be Ben or his dad? Uh, Ben. Okay. Maybe his dad's passed and left left his like Cajun cookery to his son. <laughs> yeah, and maybe he was he once was a captain, but you know the, the Wolf Three Five Nine like caused him to like turn it in. Yeah, I mean, or, or I was actually just thinking like it's the same Cisco we had. He's just come back and he's realized what's important in life, and it's like crawsh crawfish and shit. Right, it's just growing his own tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, it's a, like like the being away with the prophets uh, brought him to a, a, a peace. Yeah, he's <laughs> like I could either hang out with Admiral Ross or I could grow my own tomatoes. Ha ha. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, um, so that's my crew. That then it really is. It sort of like more from when we decided to add a, a charismatic villain. It just made me think of a storyline instead of just a. Uh, and really, it all works in the timeline except for Kirk and Spock being pulled. Or I'm sorry, Kirk and uh, Kirk and Khan being pulled out of time and placed into this. Uh, into the situation and that like that is mm-hmm. the impetus for the whole story right yeah so that's my that's my bad fan fiction for the day <laughs> but I gotta say I love the idea of an army of genetically engineered soldiers some are sort of mindless like the Jim Hadar but like that you know they were always trying to find the humanity in the Jim Hadar and they never did but it'd be interesting mm-hmm. if like Khan breaking them free from the like you know, slavery under the founders sort of like not only makes them a horrible antagonist, but also like we sort of find their culture and who they are without the founders could mm-hmm. be could be cool. That's my that's my story, and that's that's what I came up with. I I feel like I didn't do the homework properly. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was fun. Thanks, guys, for checking out the Star Trek Universe podcast. Thank you, Jason Smith. Yeah, thank you for the uh, commissioned episode there, Jason Smith. This was fun. Uh, we'll do more. We'll, we'll probably do more dream cruise for maybe other situations. <laughs> At least mine was super situational. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I tomorrow's a different day. I'll yeah. have a different. I'll have a different crew. Who knows? Who knows, man? All right, guys. So thank you so much for hanging out with us. We'll be back soon. Peace. Live long and prosper. To reach out to us, hit us up at StarTrekUcast.com, at StarTrekUcast on Twitter, Star Trek Universe Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. Just search for us there or send us a message at StarTrekUcast at gmail.com. If you'd like to hear more from David C. Robertson, check out the DC On Screen podcast or maladjusted.tv. And if you want to hear more from Matthew Carroll, that's me, check out the Marvel Cinematic Universe podcast or go listen to my music at matthewcarrollmusic.com or anywhere you get music. <laughs>